Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're talking about spring sewing which is very exciting although as I'm filming this it's freezing outside. <laughs> we had a real rapid switch in weather which I think was I think it, the cold front moved across the country so I, I know we're not the only ones um, which necessitated a not only a silk wool sweater but also um, a shirt underneath it so We've gone from, we had to turn our air conditioning on because it got so warm, and then we had to turn the heater on again last night. It's this weather, crazy, crazy. But we're going to talk about some spring sewing. Um, I've got 10 ready-to-wear looks here for you guys that I'm going to pair with fabric and patterns. So if any of these strike your fancy, you can uh, make these up. All right, I've got my computer over here. In fact, you can probably, I'm trying to see on the viewfinder. I think you can probably maybe see my little table that's just right out here, but that's what it is. It's my computer so that I can see what you're seeing. <laughs> I'll pop things up on the screen. <laughs> All right, these videos can get long, so let's get tucked in. All right, for this first one, I, um, I think this was a J. Jill top. Um, it's just such a cute, little beyond basic to use words from um everyday style capsules a beyond basic knit top um i just think that it takes a t-shirt elevates it a little bit and i think that that sleeve detail is really cool um it could be really flattering because it creates some vertical lines um on the body i think that could make it um slenderizing so even though I don't like accentuating my shoulders. I think if you've got some fabric with enough drape that go on your shoulders that you should be good to go. So for the pattern on this, I have picked the Style Arc, uh, I think it's the Posey Knit Top. Um, it is basically the top that you're looking at that this lady's wearing. I was doing the, the research, I'm like, oh, well there's that top. <laughs> makes that so easy. <laughs> um, it's just got a really cool, the way that sleeve detail fits into that um, princess seam um, is really, really cool. And uh, the princess seam alone makes it easier to do any kind of bust adjustments that you may want to do. Even though it's a knit top, you still may want to do a um, dartless FBA, which in a uh, princess seam is dartless. So you could just do a regular princess seam FBA if you needed to. Um, just gives you a little bit more options for fitting across the bust. And then for fabric, I have two Minerva fa fabrics. So um, the first one, this is their Jersey Eyelet. And this is the same fabric that I used for my um, Adrian blouse that has the, um, I did the eyelet sleeves and then the cotton spandex body on that one. Um, so it's got some, it's not as drapey as like the viscose that I'm going to show you here in a second to go with it, but it does have some nice drape and it's Jersey. So you could get away with not having to hem. I would just leave the edges raw. Now the inspiration shirt has like a really pretty like scalloped hem, like the edge of the eyelet um, there on the outside. But I think you could just leave it raw with the pattern and just not hem it because it's Jersey and it's not going to ravel anyway. Um, and that would number one, leave the bulk down and then you don't have any kind of hemming issues with being able to see the other side from the little eyelet parts. So I would just leave the hem raw, but I've chosen the color in this wonderful, I think it's called old gold, um, for the eyelet. And then for the body of the shirt, I've gone with, um, their Minerva core range, their viscose, their luxury viscose Jersey, which is lovely. I've used that on a few occasions. And I think while viscose Jersey is not my go-to for most things, I tend to be more cotton spandex or cotton modal spandex for most of my tops. There are instances where I do like a viscose jersey because you just need a little bit of drape and I think in this shirt you do. So um, some people like plain t-shirts in the viscose jersey. That's fine. They just like a drapier t-shirt. With my boobs, I just don't, it's just not my favorite. The silhouette it creates on me is not my favorite overall. Um, but I do like it in certain instances and I have a couple of uh, T beyond basic t-shirt knit tops in this fabric and I really really love them so I think combining those two together is going to recreate that top and this really might be one that I recreate um I really love it <laughs> and as you know I usually do create do some sew alongs with a few of these uh, my first sew along or my next sew along that's going to be not sew along I'm sorry sew the look um I usually do a couple of sew the looks with these um as we go through the season. I don't do all of them, but a few. Um, but actually my first sew the look that you're gonna be seeing, um, 
the first week of May, I think. I think that's kind of the plan. It's actually a sew the look for Jenny, and it is a ready-to-wear look that I showed you, I think, last spring, or maybe this, I think it was last spring. So um, anyway, um, I'll be throwing that one in there, but yes, I am, um, I'll do a few of these sew the looks as we go through. All right, look number two. I think this dress is so stinking cute. This is, I think, Bowden. I'm pretty sure it's Bowden. Just a knit t-shirt dress. Now, the neckline is a little plunging for me, um, but that's why we sew. We can change whatever we want about things, but I think the puff sleeves are really cute. Now, I do not like a short puff sleeve on myself. It's just, it does not does me zero favors between my bust. I'm top heavy anyway. It is not a good look for me. But my daughter, who is an hourglass, it looks adorable on her. I mean, it really is a good look. So if you're a pear shape or hourglass, I feel like you can get away with more um, definition at your shoulders to balance your figure out really, really well. So it's all about proportion. But I would mix two patterns for this one. I would mix the Love Notions Arlington um, which is the turtleneck pattern, but they have a short puff sleeve. Um, it's actually not on the picture <laughs> on the front of the pattern here for some reason, but I have used it for uh, my daughter a couple of times, that sleeve pattern. It's so cute. Um, it just gets gathered. It's just a puff sleeve and it gets fitted in with a little cuff. It's, it's the sleeve that this gal is wearing. But I would stick that onto the Tessa sheath dress, also by Love Notions. Um, and you can play around with your necklines. I think I would maybe go more the scoop neckline, but if you wanted to draft a V-neckline on that Tessa, it's very easy to do. You're just drawing in a new neckline, and then you'll need to, you know, uh, create a facing. Or, um, yeah, I think I would create a facing. I like the, actually like the facing on the Tessa. Um, I always top stitch it down, but yeah, I think I would, that would probably be the easiest with the V-neck. Um, give a nice clean finish and it would look more like this dress, but I think you could easily get away with it. Um, and the fabric I chose, it isn't exactly um, an exact match, but um, I think it's pretty close. And this is a Stoff um, jersey knit. Uh, let's see, I got this from Minerva, but um, University of Sewing sells Stoff knits as well and they are just divine to work with. I highly recommend, it's a really good cotton spandex jersey. Um, great recovery, beefy. <laughs> um, it's just a really good jersey. So I would highly recommend this. And it gives the same color story. Um, obviously the print's not an exact match, but I think that it could definitely work to recreate this dress. And I am tempted, um, maybe not in this colorway though, but to recreate this dress for my daughter, um, something in a little bit more her muted colors, uh, which this is muted. I don't know if this color might work for her because she's got a lot of muted greens on her color card. Um, and since the background's muted, that fabric could work for her. And her eyes are green. I do love her in green. All right, look number three. I um, actually, the uh, fabric for these shorts, this is also Bowden, I think, um, but the fabric for these shorts, um, you're gonna see at the end as well um, with another piece that kind of went with this whole collection. Um, I just think this is really cool. A really streamlined pair of shorts. And then I, what I love is the, uh, the boxier sweatshirt that they've got paired with it with the details around the neckbands, and I've got ideas for that. So for the patterns, I've gone with the Pattern Emporium Unwind Sweater for the top, and I've made this pattern before, and actually mine is also in a cream colorway. Um, it's a bamboo cotton, um, mine is made in a bamboo cotton uh, jer um, sweatshirting from uh, Blackbird, and I have picked a bamboo cotton sweatshirting from Stylemaker. Um, mine is more heathered, like with, I think it was called almond or something like that. This is uh, winter white, I believe, but it's going to give you a wonderful, um, you're going to be able to recreate this sweatshirt exactly. And Stylemaker does sell the matching ribbing, bamboo cotton ribbing to go with it, so I would highly recommend grabbing that as well. But I would make the, the cropped version, which is the one that I have in my own closet right now, and then to get the details around the um, uh, sleeve and around the neck and on the shoulder, if you have a cover stitch machine, I would cover stitch top stitch, but instead of the um, two lines of stitching on the right side of the fabric, I would do the loopy one on the right side of the fabric. So um, I think that that would just look really cool. Now you could replicate this too with maybe some binding and stuff in, in the seam allowance to give it the same look, but I think it would be so easy if you have a cover stitch to put like a bright pop of color into the loopers of your cover stitch, into the 
the chain stitch part and then just um, sew with the loopy side on the top and you would get a really cool finish um, and it gives a kind of an athletic finish too. I'm sure there's some stitches on your sewing machine that would do something maybe similar um, but you could really just have a, a fun doing some of the decorative stitches. I mean you could do any of the decorative stitches on your sewing machine really. Just do a bright pop of color and do it ones that are going to stretch obviously because you need to be able to get things on over your head. I don't think I would worry about the um, the stitching there at the um, at the drop sleeve because that doesn't need to stretch, but definitely by your cuff so that your hand can get through. You're just going to make sure it's one that has some give to it, so maybe do some samples. But yes, the back side of your cover stitch or a really fun decorative stitch could be a really great way to get the look on that sweatshirt. And for the shorts, I, I couldn't find anything quite this colorful. Um, Maybe if I looked around just a little bit more, I feel like these are the type of like um, heavier weight woven fabrics that come in uh, that Blackbird or Core fabrics a lot of times will stock. They just didn't have anything in right now. But Style Maker did have this really cool cotton brocade, not brocade, it was a cotton kind of boucle. It's for jackets and that sort of stuff. So structured. Um, it's not as colorful, but I think you could get a very similar look. And for the pattern, I've gone with the Hepburn shorts by um, Pattern Emporium as well. And it has two options. It has an elastic back option and then an actual waistband option for those shorts, But um, which I'm very interested maybe to try out. So I don't know. I may grab that pattern at some point um, and try that pattern out. Uh, but I think that with that fabric and you could make your stripes going vertically with the um, sweatshirt, you could get basically the same look that this gal has going on now. And vertical stripes are always slimming. So there you go. All right. I actually, I, I love all these. I mean, that's why I pick these ready to wear looks because I, they, I'm drawn to them. <laughs> But there, this next look, this is your classic shirt dress. So number one, of, of course I was drawn to the color of this. Very simple shirt dress. I think you could dress it up or down really, really easily. And the color on it is the Revere color. So it is more of like the camp collar that kind of folds back as opposed to a collar and collar stand, um, which I think can be a lot of fun. Um, just something a little bit different. It lays flatter than a collar stand and collar. So just something a little bit different when it comes to a shirt dress. For the pattern, I have gone with Vogue, oh, what are the numbers? 9345, I have this pattern, and this is one of the custom fit ones, so it has the cup sizes, which is lovely. Um, I would choose the longer length. You could, you know, crop it a little bit to make it a little bit more midi, because I'm not sure if that hits more maxi or what. Um, and then I would choose one of the shorter sleeve lengths to go with that. Um, you could even do the fuller sleeve that's included and and do that sleeve and make it short, but then bring it in at a cuff because it kind of looks like the sleeve on this dress has a little bit more fullness there. I wouldn't do that on my body just because that's not a sleeve I enjoy on my body, but you could definitely do that and that'd probably be pretty easy to do. Um, but I think that you could, I mean, it's the collar is the correct. It's got the buttons down the front. I think it would make a really lovely shirt dress and basically copy what you see here. For the fabric, I have gone with some of the organic linen from the fabric store. Their linen is just chef's kiss. It is just wonderful. Um, and this color, I think this color is called brick, but it it's the bright red. Actually, as I was looking through this, I'm like, I don't have that color in my uh, linen stash. Maybe I need some of that. <laughs> but it's just such a beautiful uh, color of red and I think you could very much recreate this dress with that fabric and that pattern. And I have that pattern, so I'm very tempted. Do I need any more fabric? No, I need more fabric like I need a hole in the head. I do not need any more fabric. <laughs> but, you know, you know. Okay, uh, look number five. I think this look is so incredibly chic. If you work in any kind of office setting, um, or if you just want to dress nice, which is where I am in life. I just feel better when I am put together. So I, I go about my day better. Everything works out better when I feel more put together. And I just think that this, number one, this outfit would be very slimming because it's modern. It's the same color top to bottom, and you can mix and match the pieces with just about anything. Um, for the top, I have gone, I was trying to pick different pattern companies for all of this, but this is the, um, Barra Studio, oh, what's the name of it? The 
the Olivia blouse. And it's just, it's a button up shirt, but it's got, um, it's a little bit more oversized, which I think is kind of the look that you have going here. Obviously you can use any button down shirt or button up shirt that you've got in your stash. Um, but I, you do want something a little bit more relaxed. So Love Notions Aria would also work um, because I've chosen a little bit heavier linen for the fabric in this, just so it would translate well in the shirt and the pants. Um, and I've gone with the heavyweight linen from the fabric, fabric store which makes fabulous pants, but I don't think it's too heavy for a shirt. Um, it's gonna be a little bit, actually, it'll make a great shirt that you could wear just as is, as a shirt, or it would make a great jacket or like a layering piece for the summer as well. If you were to um, leave it unbuttoned and pair it over like a tank top and shorts, be great if you're going into anything with, um, um, air conditioning where you want just a little bit of an extra layer. Uh, so yeah, a little bit more oversized with the button up shirt, but yeah, I, this Vara Studio um, Olivia blouse looked really interesting to me and I've not sewn any of their patterns before. They've got some really uh, cool looking ones. So um, I put that one with the Paradise Pan, Paradise Patterns Portia pants, it's hard to say. <laughs> I really want to make this pattern as well. This was in my um, video that I did about five new to me pattern companies I wanted to try. This was one of those patterns and I would love to recreate these. Um, and again, that heavyweight linen and that, I think it's called, it's either military or olive, I can't remember. I have everything linked in the description box below, all the patterns, all the fabrics, everything. Um, but I think that that outfit would be wonderful to wear together, but then what a really cool um, way to have an outfit that then breaks off into pieces and you can just mix and match, especially if you choose a neutral that's in your color palette, which olive green is in mine. Okay, for look six, I've gone with pajamas because I think that a good set of PJs is great to have in your wardrobe. Um, I sleep hot, so I would basically wear this all year round because uh, I like to just be cool and I just layer on blankets as needed depending on the weather. But I think, um, feeling good at all times. So even when you're going to bed, even if you're sleeping alone, just being more put together. And then when you get up in the morning and you're puttering around the house, just feeling a little bit, um, I mean, you're in PJs, so you're not really put together, but just feeling a little bit um, more polished maybe um, in all aspects, but still comfortable. Um, for the pattern on this, I've gone with the Megan Nielsen Reef Camisole and Shorts. It's a, a pattern, includes both of them. I've made this before, and it's a lovely little pattern. Um, I'm trying to remember if, a sh if there is a shelf bra included in the pattern. I can't remember, but it would be very easy to recreate. I would just line the bodice of the camisole with um, jersey knit, and instead of going all the way to the bottom, so that's the way you would finish off your neckline, um, you know, I would cut it a certain length, and then just add elastic to that um, lining piece that fits in really close to my underbust. So I would have like a little bit of a shelf bra in there. But yeah, the jersey knit just gives you a little bit of support without it being constrictive. Um, I enjoy a good um, shelf bra inside my PJs. I don't know, it just makes me feel everything's not going everywhere when I'm sleeping. Um, but for the fabric, I've gone with another fabric store, uh, this beautiful kind of pale pink and cream stripe linen. Um, and you could basically just recreate what this gal has on. Um, but I mean, linen pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds delightful. Um, and I think you would just, you would sleep really comfortable, comfortably. Linen is a uh, natural fiber, so it is naturally wicking. So if you sleep hot, like I do, I think this would be a, a good, a good PJ set to consider. Okay, look number seven. Now, this is a pretty simple looking look, but I just love the high-waisted wide leg pants, and I feel like I need a pair in my wardrobe, like jeans, um, which these are. They're obviously a lighter wash. I didn't pick anything for the t-shirt because it's just a cream colored t-shirt. You could put whatever you want on the top of these. Um, but for the bottoms, I have gone with the Atelier Schemi, um California trousers. I These were also in my pattern uh, video where the new to me pattern companies, this was one of the ones I had chosen as well. I really want to make these up. I don't own this pattern yet, but I'm very tempted to grab it because um, I think that these are just a very chic and current looking um, style line. And I love a wide leg pant on me because I am top heavy. It uh, balances out my figure really, really well. 
And for the denim, I've gone with this, um, I think it's called Light Wash. I think it's called the Light Wash, but it is from Style Maker Fabrics. I have used this and it is definitely more light blue than is showing. I mean, it shows up light blue on, cam on the camera, but it is um, pretty light blue. I've actually uh, made a pair of Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans in the same fabric. Um, I can no longer even get close to fitting into those, but <laughs> um, I have used the fabric before for a couple of different applications and it's really, really great. I would highly recommend that denim um, and it would be great for, and I actually have some in my stash right now. Um, I was going to make something for Ava, I think, but then I ended up not. So anyway, I, I could very easily make myself these pants um, in that fabric. I just need the pattern. We'll see. I have so many plans, so little time. <laughs> All right, this next one is more of an athletic look, which I don't normally go for um, with these type of videos, but I really our um, trip to um, Disney back in October has made me such a convert for a good sport. I also play golf and I know that there's quite a few actually my viewers that also that often comment like, oh, I play too. Um, but I think that this whole look not only would it be great on the golf course, but I think it would be great for um, any kind of just separate pieces to be able to mix and match and wear um, as you would like. Um, I actually flip-flopped my fabric, so I've gone with navy for the top and white for the bottom because that, that's what I could find with fabric, uh, but it's going to give us the same look. But for the top, I have gone with the Jess Polo from Style Maker Fabrics. This is actually the knit top that I made for my fitting class, and um, so I've got a really good polo shirt that fits me now, um, and I d have promised some athletic sewing here on the channel, so you are going to be seeing some of that um, here soon on the channel, some athletic wear um, sewing for my son and for myself. Uh, and I've sourced some fabric, so now I'm really excited about it. Uh, but for the, the shirt fabric, I've gone with this. It's actually an Under Armour wicking. Um, I think it's a, is it a piquet? Well, it's got a, a, a pattern that's, you know, a tonal pattern that's on, on there from Surge Fabrics. And I really want to buy some for myself as well as for my son because um, I want to try make him some golf shirts as well, just some solid ones that he can, you know, wear when he's on the golf course. But it's Under Armour Wicking Fabric. Like you would, it would be perfect. And if you didn't want to make this athletic, you could also make this top in just a regular cotton lycra um, or cotton modal lycra and get a, just a polo shirt, a collared shirt, which are very in right now. And I left the buttons off mine, so it gives it more of the Johnny collar look, which can be really chic as well. Um, and this pattern also comes with long sleeves, so no matter what um, season you're getting ready to go into or you're in, transitional season you're in, um, you could, you know, do either. Um, I, and I was really impressed with the pattern, so... There's that one. And then for the skort, I've gone with Simplicity 9336, which is um, Simplicity pattern, and it's for skorts. It has the, the gal's got the wraparound front, but it also has more of just an A-line front. But it is a skort, and it is a skirt in the front and the back, from what I can tell from the pattern, with the shorts underneath, So, um, which is what I prefer. I You know, some of those skorts are just a skirt in the front, and then it's shorts in the back. I prefer um, just the shorts to be underneath, and that's what this one does for you. And for the bottom, I have chosen some of the um, Surge fabrics. It's their Excel ATY, which is a generic form of Suplex, actually. And Suplex is the knit that like Lululemon uses for their knits and all that. Um, but this is just the same fabric, just a generic uh, name. And they have some in white. So I would be fine wearing a white skirt in this. Now, I would maybe steer clear of like white leggings, um, mostly because I find that the lighter colored fabrics, they just show your lumps and bumps like they shadow and you can see like all the little lumps and bumps in your parts, <laughs> like in your thighs and all that kind of stuff. But as a skirt, especially a skirt that has shorts underneath it, I think you would be great. And how crisp is a white skirt? Um, I think this would be cute again to wear not only if you're golfing or playing tennis or whatever, but I think it would be great just as an alternative athleisure wear to shorts, which I am, like I said, a huge proponent of the skort after living in them um, at Disney this past October. All right, two more looks here. 
So for this next one, I think, number one, this model is absolutely stunning, but I think that this is such a cute and fun top for um, spring and summer, easy to layer. It's got a cute little peplum on it, little button up um, strappy number, and the fabric is stunning. Um, this one, the minute I saw this, I knew exactly what pattern I was gonna go with, and that is the Nomi Patterns ME, 2019, which is an Alyssa Threads. Um, she's the designer on this one, and it comes with different versions. You could do sleeves on it, or you could just do strappy. Obviously, to mimic the model, you would, you would do strappy, but if you wanted to add the sleeve, I think that this would be just as cute of a top. And folks, I'm pretty sure I found the exact fabric. I mean... It looks very similar if it's not the exact fabric. And this is a cotton block print that I found from Blackbird Fabrics. You should go over there. If you are into um, cotton, like a lightweight cotton lawn and cotton voils for summer, she has got some gorgeous block prints over there um, at Blackbird Fabrics. Um, and yeah, and different color palettes as well. So I would, I would go over there and have a look. But this one is from that, and I'm pretty sure it looks like the same to me. And I really love that. That is in my color palette. And I i don't know that I would make that top with it because that's just not a style that I personally wear. It, my daughter would wear it all day long. I'm just, my upper body is just a little bit meatier on me than my lower body. This is probably body dysmorphia all day long, but um, I'm just not as comfortable in strappier tops like that. Uh, yeah, to wear just out, maybe layering. Um, but I would prefer... I do wear sleeveless tops, but I prefer more the tank style. And I have to be able to wear a bra. That's just a game, that right there. <laughs> that's just, yeah, that's just how it is in these days. I refuse to wear strapless bras anymore. All right, look number 10. I, this is the fabric I said you would see again from those shorts, which what a fun little set this would make. Um, this is a jacket from, I think this also came from Bowdoin. So obviously the same fabric that I picked for the shorts, I would pick for the jacket, um, that uh, cotton kind of boucle or woven, heavy woven cotton from um, StyleMaker Fabrics. But I would mix and match um, the cozy jacket from Pattern Scout. Now there is the cozy jacket, which is more of a zip up hoodie style jacket. And then she has an expansion pack. And I would kind of pick and choose pieces from those two. So you would need both patterns. I have both patterns, both the uh, cozy jacket and the expansion, um, but I would do the elastic waist that comes with the original cozy jacket and the elastic around the cuff because that's what the, uh, does this have elastic? No, this, uh, no, it does. It has elastic at the cuff, um, but it does have elastic through the back. So I would do the elastic at the back and the cuff, but then do the expansion that has the button up front and the collar. Um, for the cozy and you would have this jacket. And what a great transitional piece that this would make. Again, you've got another layer that you can throw on with the air conditioning if the weather gets warm or um, on these days where all of a sudden the temperature drops and you actually need a jacket, you've got that as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure by getting those two patterns, um, well, you have to have, getting the expansion pattern, you have to have the uh, regular pattern in order to use the expansion pattern, but getting that expansion pattern and just, you know, picking and choosing a few of those elements, you could definitely recreate this jacket um, pretty easily. Okay, guys, there you have it. Those are my 10 spring ready to wear looks and the patterns and fabrics you can use to recreate them for yourself. Again, you'll probably see a couple of these on the channel as, as so the looks um, as we are going through the spring months. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope the weather is good where you are or on the upswing. I hope you're getting some sewing in. I have started doing a lot of just fun sewing again and that has been just soul cleansing. <laughs> I'm <laughs> really lifting my spirits. So I hope you guys get a chance to get some sewing in as well. All right, guys, have a wonderful week. I will see you again on Friday and uh, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.